All right, Michael Katz, Ole Miss Insider, DJ Journal, and I love to always say this, 2020 Wyoming Sports Writer of the Year. Hey, that's an award you won, man. I've never won that, so i, I got to give you your props. It, it seems like that was a lifetime ago that I lived in Wyoming. That was like, that was the pandemic year. I moved to Wyoming in October, and the pandemic started that March. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't remember much after that, and then I ended up here. And so it's, 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 it really does seem like it was years ago. I, it kind of was. Yeah. But, like, it's it's... Time's weird, man. It, it, especially these days, it doesn't oh, yeah. make a lot of sense. Like well, this yeah. Atlanta weather too. I can only imagine coming <laughs> from Wyoming and then out here on this. No, that, that's a, that's actually one of my favorite things because when it does snow in Oxford, it's like once a year, and it's like right. I call it a dusting. <laughs> <laughs> no one goes out. I'm like, I'm going to Kroger because like if it's, it's going to be full. It's going to be close awesome. it down. Exactly, I can get everything I want. So this is an event. Obviously, so much media comes to. How many? of your media brothers are coming to you and saying, my God, you lucky son of a bitch, you get to cover Lane Kiffin <laughs> and everything coming out of his mouth. I mean, that guy's so entertaining. You know what? It, it's it's really been a wild year with Ole Miss doing what it did last season. Sugar Bowl, 10 wins for the first time in regular season. Yeah. Then Ole Miss wins the College World Series. Like, I've had people come up to me and they're like, it's not usually like this, man. Like, it's usually not this good. And I was like... <laughs> I'll take it. You and know? I remember even Ole Miss. I don't cover base, baseball, but I do follow it loosely through the SEC. And there was talk like, when's this uh, Bianco ever going to win this damn thing? Yeah, I uh, I kept telling my friends, I'll be home in early June in California. And I was like, well, I'll be a week later. And I was like, okay, I'll be another week. And then I was like, well, I'll see you guys in July because <laughs> they're the team of destiny apparently. But uh, it's been really cool to cover that. And, and Lane is um, – He's just he's so quotable and, and he's uh, one thing I really appreciate about him is um, his willingness to not beat around the bush on certain yeah. topics. Yeah. If if there's something that he wants to get out there, he is going to say it, and he'll say it really funny. <laughs> but he usually says it with a purpose. And right. um, whether it's you know, he's been outspoken about the transfer portal and NIL and you know, free agency and all that stuff and conference realignment, mm -hmm. um, you know, basically, you know, saying how weird it was that you know USC is gonna. You know, we we asked him about that, and he was like, "Yeah, I think it's a little bit weird. Uh, you know, regionally, I don't think it makes a lot of sense." And that's, <laughs> I think, what we're all thinking. Right. Uh, but he said, "You know, it's it's not it's about money and not traditions, and that's where we're at. And not every coach says that, but there's there's something refreshing about a guy who, you know, he's not perfect. He, you know, coaches coaches do coach things, and right. sometimes they'll you'll get under their skin and they'll get under yours. But uh, there, there's something nice about a guy who will maybe say." the cliche quiet part out loud yeah he'll, right. he'll just say it and it's it's really cool well speaking I, of usc I wish more I, honestly i wish more coaches <laughs> would do that we used to do a segment it's truth serum you know <laughs> tell the truth tuesday <laughs> and it's like there is a handful of coaches in this sec that will actually say what's on their mind and i think it gets more that's one thing it, it, uh, they get criticized they get they get blasted when they put it online mm -hmm. but but coming out, being honest, that's the shit that gets things changed. You know what I'm saying? So nobody's going to be talking about – nothing against the other coaches. Everybody's going to be talking about Lane Kiffin and his thoughts on the NIL and the transfer portal. A hundred percent. And I think part of that, too, is um, recruits see that, too. They see yeah. a coach who's sticking up for things he likes and things he believes in. And, like, in a world where, like, you have so many options of where you can go, mm -hmm. like, I think – some kids are probably like, this guy's really cool. Like, he yeah. says what's on his mind. And, you know, he's embraced the, um, you know, the he called it, they talk about like the photo shoots, you know, for, like, you know, recruits <laughs> yeah. and stuff. He's like, basically, like, if you, if you don't adapt, yeah. like, there's no point in complaining about it. You just got to do it. So, like, yeah, get that random yeah. Bentley and, like, you know, take weird pictures in planes <laughs> with recruits. Like, that's just where it's at. But, like. I, I think that it, it, it's how you, it's how you win recruits right now too. Yeah, I noticed you're still wearing a tie, you know. So he hasn't <laughs> he hasn't fully convinced you to move no, over yet. Th that, uh, I was very I thought about that when he said it, and I, I looked down. And I was like, ugh. Yeah. He's not, I know he's not staring at me, and I know he probably doesn't care about my tie. But I did. I, I was like, I was just. <laughs> yeah, you know what he's right. Just you know, yeah, just ripped it off. Well, what I was gonna say. Speaking of uh, the USC pipeline, not only Michael Katz but Lane Kiffin, and now we got Jackson Dart. And last time you were on the show, you talked up this Michael Trigg, and my God, did he look like a beast in the spring game. Mm -hmm. That was the reports all spring. He's, he's going to be probably the number one option, even though he's a tight end. But 
What about Jackson Dart? Because it seems like it's kind of up in the air whether he's going to be the starting quarterback. What, what are you hearing? But first of all, as a, as a USC graduate myself, um, let me tell you, I'm a huge Big Ten fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, it's always been, you know, that USC Maryland or Purdue game is just what I get up for in the morning. Uh, but that's another story. Um, but, you know, with Dart, it's interesting because I think we all thought when you bring in a guy like Jackson Dart. Yeah. Yeah, he, he he's gonna win the job, right? He's a five star, everything. He's yeah. a, he's everything you look for in a Lane Kiffin offense, a quarterback. But uh, you know, and I think coaches do coach things, and they're they're leaving it open. And uh, you know, n- neither guy looked great in the spring, uh, Luke Altmaier or, mm-hmm, or yeah. Dart. And you know, it's hard to blame Dart for like he's been there for like you know a two months right. um, to get all that you know down with the, all these new receivers and. Um, all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I know it's it's a quarterback competition, and, you know, Altmaier could win the job, right? But I've always kind of been on the side of if you bring in Jackson Dart, he's pro- you, pro- yeah. you don't bring him right. in to, to, to ride the bench. Yeah. Um, so I think ultimately, um, you know, one way or another, I think he's I think he's going to thrive. I think he's perfect for the offense. He's He, he does a lot of the, the things Matt Corral did. It's, it's hard to compare someone to, right. to what Matt did, but – you know, the, the elusiveness, the arm, uh, the escapability, just sort of that dynamic, uh, you know. They were both gunslingers early yeah. in their career. Jackson Dart <laughs> makes some throws where you're like, what was that? And then he'll make one that's amazing. Matt did that early in his career too. And, you know, Lane was really good at kind of getting that out of Matt and having right. him, you know, maybe not force the issue. I, I, I see a lot of similarities in that regard. Uh, Michael Trigg, um Spring game, I think he cut like three touchdowns and like two two point conversions or something. Right, it was just right. ridiculous. Mike is in love with this guy. <laughs> oh you know? no, I mean, no, 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 no! He's crowned him. I, I, I as a, as a USC fan, I was really bummed when he left because I thought this is the guy. Like right. this is the future. Yeah. This is this is the tight end of this is what it's supposed to be. Right, right, right now in football, um, you. I mean, he's. I remember we walked out there for spring practice and we saw him and we were like. This guy just looks different. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, and like, I think Lane kind of said something to the effect of like, it's like when like you go out and like everyone else looks like they're on JV, and like yeah. he's he's like he's like the varsity guy, or he's like you know the the pro ball or pro, pro ball player playing against like Pop Warner kids. Right. Like, he just <laughs> looks different, and uh, he's dynamic. I, I think he's he's gonna be really fun to watch, and yeah. uh, you know he's obviously got some work to do in terms of like blocking. I don't think USC really. You know, in that air raid offense, I don't think he really did that much. <laughs> um, and, you know, they, they do have Casey Kelly, who, you know, is more of, I guess, the conventional kind of tight end. But, man, a guy that dynamic, it, you, you got to get him the ball. Right. You got anything? I was going to ask. We like to go back and forth, but sometimes. Yeah, I, 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 no, I just. <laughs> no, you're doing great. I, I, like, nobody told me there wouldn't be food involved in this thing, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm withering away to nothing. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I can confirm that there is. Like sliced prime rib and stuff <laughs> up there. <laughs> and booze. Come on, man. If, if that. All right. Well, I, I did want to ask you, though, all, all jokes aside, about the defense. How big of a concern is that going to be with, with all the transition? And uh, we had someone on earlier. They basically they said they got nothing at linebacker there in Oxford. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's the question. Is The defensive line has, has re- replenished itself pretty well mm-hmm. through the portal. Um, Sam Williams was amazing yeah. for them last yeah. year with – you know, setting this the single season uh, sack record and, and all the things that he did, but um, you know they they, they brought in uh, Piggies from Auburn and, and Jared Ivy from Georgia Tech, and um, they feel pretty good about Cedric Johnson, who was one of the guys they brought here. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they feel pretty good about that depth, and that was you know Lane has really been trying to build up defensive line depth since he got here, and the secondary has pretty good depth too, especially when they added you know Auburn's Ladarius Tennyson and. Um, Ishim Young, like those look like pretty solid players in addition yeah. to the guys you already had coming back. But, man, you look at linebacker, and it's Chance Campbell and Mark Robinson who both got drafted. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Mark Robinson was like a running back until, uh, you know, a year or a year and a half ago, and he ends up being this like really like kind of like a revelation at linebacker. And Chance Campbell was a, a, a home run in the transfer portal. And uh, they have like no tackles coming back at that linebacker. And I know the – you know, the, the, the two linebacker base alignment is weird and it, it changes responsibilities and, you know, they'll have safeties come up and, and do that sort of thing and, and kind of play closer up. But um, it, it, 
I, I think, again, it's the transfer portal with Troy Brown from Central Michigan, who was an all-MAC guy, and I understand the MAC is the MAC, but right. he's got a lot of experience, and, and he's made a lot of 220-something tackles in his career. Uh, and then they brought in, um, you know, Kerry Coleman from uh, from TCU, who you know was was really really good his first year. Last year had some some injuries and stuff, um, but again, just a, a really productive guy. And I think it's kind of like Lane said today that there's just sort of a curiosity factor with this team because the pieces look really really good. Like, yeah. but who on earth knows how they fit right now? No one right. knows. And yeah. so. There's a lot of talent there. I, I really like the talent. I think there's a chance they're really, this, really good. Is this the Ole Miss approach moving forward, just plug and play? I, I mean, I think until – you know, I know Lane has said there needs to be, like, cap and you know, all that kind of right. stuff. But until things change, like, they're going to keep playing the game. And the yeah. way Ole Miss wins is – I think they've realized they are not going to generally win – the high school recruiting battles against right. Bama and Georgia. And, you know, they're not going to get, like, the number one quarterback in the country out of high school. But – they might get him after he leaves after, Tennessee, after, after, yeah. Yeah, or after he leaves USC. No, yeah, yeah, no. And so, and I think that's if if that's what you got to do to get talent on the roster, you got to take advantage. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the new JUCO, you know. No, it, 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 no, it really is. I mean, we're it's kind of like a minor league system yeah. of like guys do the developing for you, mm -hmm. and then yeah, you know, I I covered Wyoming before. They got poached right. this offseason. They're running backs at Arizona State. They got a corner at UCLA. They've got all of these guys. Receiver at all these of Texas? Yes. Yes, Isaiah Nyer. Uh, he had an Ole Miss offer, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guys do the hard work for you. <laughs> they do the scouting, <laughs> and then, like, they get good, and you're like, okay, well. We'll take them. Yeah, we'll, we'll take you in Austin, buddy. <laughs> and I love Kiffin's response. I'm sure you've seen this over the offseason, but he said, we target guys that are productive in college, not guys that were five stars that have done nothing. Right in the college game. So we're getting guys we know can play. This is like a money year for them. It is like free agency. And and I think that's kind of the genius of what he's doing because, like you said, Alabama, A&M, LSU, they're going to beat him on the recruiting trail more often than not. So why not get a kid that's already transferred? You know, I, I hate to say stuck, but they kind of are. They can't yeah. transfer again. Otherwise, they'll have to sit out a year. I just think it's funny. He recruits like he plays, you know, like if if he's got a good quarterback, if he's got a great running back, he's going to cater that offense to that position. Mm -hmm. And you see it in recruiting now. He, he it's not working like you said in the in the senior high school's living room when you can wait a couple years and pick who is productive outside the sometimes in the SEC. Yeah. Hey, last thing I wanted to ask you, Charlie Weiss Jr. Uh, what do you think he'll bring? Because, heck, he's we all know who his father is and all that, and he's got that upbringing. But, hell, he's cut his teeth at Alabama. He's worked with Lane at FAU. So there, there's familiarity there. Uh, do you think he – we all know Lane's an offensive genius. What impact, if any, will Weiss have, do you think? I, I, I If I had to, to guess, and this is all, of course, kind of guesswork right now, but I, – you know, the offense was just so good the last few years. I can't imagine it changing much. Yeah. And like you said, Lane is – the offense is going to be what Lane wants it to yeah. be. Um, and, you know, they did pick up some – you know, Jeff Levy really brought in that pace and that, that frenetic sort of um, energy that, you know, plays per, per game just was, you know, up towards the top. And, um, you know, it, it works so well. I, you, you can't – well, I mean, why would you not do that anymore? Yeah. So I, I think it's going to look pretty similar. I, I do think that – People might have been a little bit turned off because Charlie Weiss Jr., his last job was at South Florida, and that didn't, like, go great. Yeah. But I think circumstance matters. And you look at what he did at FAU, and he did some really good things with Lane. He's obviously been at Bama. Um, it doesn't mm -hmm. really get much better than that in terms yeah. of guys to learn from. Um, I, 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 you know, personnel is going to be – I think personnel is going to be the biggest thing. I don't think there's going to be a huge difference right. in terms of uh, the style of play and whatnot. And – uh, I, I, th I think it should be, you know, as Jonathan Mingo said, we still want to go really fast and score a lot of points. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, man, if we put it like that, why would you not? Absolutely. Could you make the case Ole Miss the toughest team to project just with the, all the moving pieces? Yeah, it, you look at front of their schedule. Mm -hmm. is, is You hate to use easy because, you know, like yeah. Lane said, you never know. But there's no reason they shouldn't be 5-1 and one or 6-0. and oh. And then they got the gauntlet. Yes. <laughs> now, if the team develops the way it can – and they hit their stride midway through the season, they can win some of those late right. games. Especially, you know, they got some, uh, you know, no one wants to play Bama, but at least you have them at home. <laughs> right. um, you know, and LSU still, damn, they're, they got a new coach too. And so there's a lot of different yeah. sort of pieces there. And Were you surprised Kiffin was so angry at the Bama question right out the gate? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I mean, it was hilarious. Uh, just, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bold 
uh, move to have the first question be not about your team. <laughs> right. Like, I think we're all like, yeah, if I had a question to ask Lane, I'd Especially ask this. Especially when this is out of damn Hoover or whatever. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, no, I was, yeah, no. But he, he handled it like he always does. He, yeah, he said yeah, it's Kirk Smart. Savings, Mark Stoops. He even got asked Kentucky football today. So Yeah, no, it was it was perfect. But he, 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 he handled it like Lane always handles yeah. things. But, um, yeah. Have you I, met this dog? Juice? Yeah. <laughs> the, the dog that has, like, 20,000 Twitter followers? Seriously? That, I, I, I've joked with friends. That dog's going to be verified before I am. I have no doubt in my mind. And I'm not, not mad about it, but I'm mad about it. Michael, I cannot thank you enough. Can you plug for the audience, you know, where to find your work, what you've been working on? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Daily Journal, uh, djournal.com, uh, at Michael L. Katz. Um, if, if you want to see some... Some sports tweets, some random <laughs> tweets. Uh, I think Michael and, and, and Cousin Shane can tell you it, it's kind of a, a mixture of a lot of things. It's not always just SEC stuff, but I like to have fun, and uh, hopefully you learn something along the way.